So the first step in the process is to take photographs of your object from multiple viewpoints. Try and get as much overlap as you can between individual shots. These were shot with a manual aperture and focus so that each one of the exposures is uh, identically exposed. That makes it easier in the subsequent process, which is to uh, import your images into Metashape. So you can see in the workflow menu, the very first item in workflow is to import images after you create a new project. And so here you can see in, in the finder, all of the photographs I've just copied off of the, uh, off of the Canon that I just used to shoot. Uh, these are all just JPEGs. There's no need for them to be raw or any other format. And you can see there are 31 images that were taken as I walked around the object. Uh, I had a student stand behind me as well to block any extraneous information uh, behind the image so that I didn't capture background stuff that it would try to digitize or try to uh, locate. Uh, here in just this demo, I put it in low res mode, but you'll probably want to put it in high. It'll take quite a bit longer. Uh, but uh, let's zoom through this real quick and you'll see they've uh, it's aligned 31 of 31 cameras so there were no errors or anything you can fix errors manually uh, if you need to but if you've shot well it, it's probably not necessary um, here you can see a dense cloud representation of the um, uh, of the capture um, it, and you can also see uh, where the individual uh, cameras were uh, identified and located uh, to construct the image. So each one of those little icons there is where the camera or where the computer thinks that the camera was located when this uh, dense point cloud was uh, generated or when I shot the photos. Next step is to build a dense cloud from the sparse cloud. So select that. Here I'll just select lowest just so that uh, for demo purposes it runs quickly. And that will go through and do the detailed analysis of where various color points and information are. And here is our dense cloud. You can see that it did pick up some extraneous information around the perimeter. I don't really need that pedestal uh, underneath, uh, but it did a good job of uh, capturing what of capturing the object of what I shot. So the next step then is to remove this extraneous information, uh, clean it up, and you'll do that with the second icon up there. I like to use the freeform selection tool, which kind of allows you to draw manually around the chunks that you don't need and then hit the old delete button there and remove anything that you don't need. little bitty chunk. Let's see if we can straighten it up. The orientation of things in this in Metashape is a little bit wonky compared to other 3D programs, but but it does work. So you kind of have to fiddle with it to get your view lined up like you want. It looks like that'll work. I select the selection tool again, draw around the areas that I want to delete and hit the old X button to delete them from the view. That looks pretty close right there. That's going to probably work for my purposes. A little bitty chunk right there. The next step in the workflow is to build a mesh from the dense cloud. 
And so your source, of course, is dense cloud. I had that selected in the workspace on the left, so it automatically filled that out for me. But uh, and then uh, uh, so just select what resolution you want. This is a pretty dense one, so we'll uh, speed up through it. And there you go. There is our 3D model made from our point cloud. It's a little blurry. See how the texture information is kind of blurry? That's because that's using just vertex color information. So the next thing we'll want to do is build a texture uh, which takes the, the cameras and reprojects them onto the surface to create a, a texture from the model. And you'll see once that process is finished, and we'll speed through that again, you'll see how much sharper the texture is, the information on the surface. Much better, right? So there is our, our dense 3D model with um, a texture projected onto the surface of it. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just save this model. We'll, we'll uh, or this project. I'm going to export the model to an OBJ file. You'll see that is listed amongst the options at the bottom. Wavefront OBJ, Wave, alias Wavefront Front was the um, creator, inventor of Maya, and so it's actually kind of become a pretty standard model trans uh, format uh, to use to transform or transfer models from various pa packages. Uh, we'll just use a JPEG uh, image um, you could export EXR and that sort of thing. So now we have ourselves an OBJ model that we can open in Maya. So that'll be our next step. There is our texture information that's created from Metashape. You can see it's kind of discontinuous. It's pretty good, actually. It's better than a lot of uh, texture atlases that get created by these programs. Okay, so we've shot images of our object. We have uh, aligned the images in Metashape and produced an OBJ model. And now our next step will be to uh, put those models or the model and the image texture in the assets folder of our Maya project that we've created for working on on this uh, work and so here we go are setting up and importing our model from again the assets folder and demon baby obj which is the high resolution model that we exported from uh, from Metashape. Uh, you can orient your object so that it would come in at the zero zero point of your grid but it's it's not a big deal as long as you don't move your model around in between the steps of this process and you can see that there this is a pretty dense model I'll turn on hardware texturing so you can see the texture applied to the surface but look how dense that is. It's a lot of uh, information, not something that you could animate or work with very easily in, in Maya or any 3D package for that matter. So there's almost a million faces on this thing. 884,400 uh, faces. Um, so our next step then is to use Maya to retopo this. So we'll select our geometry and we turn on the make it lie a live surface uh, which means hitting the little magnet the little uh, magnet up there and you'll see that suddenly our demon baby mesh is listed there as a live surface and we can't select it in our viewport anymore. Uh, but I've already started producing uh, some retopo on here with some using the quad draw tool and so I can select my object and start to uh, draw uh, faces, polygons, onto the surface of the model. And they'll stick to the surface or just off of the surface. The goal here is to start very, very loosely and very, very broadly. You don't want to get make start out from the very beginning making 
um, really small polygons. You just want to make uh, kind of general loops that traverse and follow the geometry that you're working on. You can see how the upper edge of the uh, underneath the collar on the sculpture, I created a loop that followed around the bottom of that edge. And then I'm trying to create uh, strips that follow the geometry of the arm. Uh, it starts to get tricky when you get down into these holes. You have to figure out how to uh, thread your geometry through the holes of uh, like where that arm is sitting on the knee. Um, but uh, again, start broadly. Don't worry about it being perfectly. Uh, it'll be stuck to the surface, but uh, it'll be just kind of a loose, low poly approximation of the of the geometry. So I'll let this run for a while until something significant happens. We'll speed it up so you don't have to watch the entire. I think I, I probably spent a good, I don't know, four to six hours contiguous working on uh, retopoing the model here.
Okay, so the model is done. Um, you can see that it has something like 12,000 uh, UVs, uh, 7,000, 7,800 uh, faces. So quite a reduction from the almost a million that we had before. Um, and so you could close in the bottom completely and make it a, a complete shell. Uh, I'm just going to scale in the lower vertices along the bottom edge to give it a little bit of thickness. So if from certain angles you view and see the bottom portions of it, it at least look like it has some thickness. And, uh, and that's it. So once we're done with that, we'll have a nice low poly version of our model. All right, so the next step in our process is to lay out some UVs on our low poly surface. You can see in the menu there's a number of different choices. I'm just going to choose cylindrical just because that kind of approximates the, the shape that we have right here. Uh, really, this is just to get a starting point so that you can do it manually in the UV editor. Uh, go ahead and move the cylindrical uh, projection all the way around to cover the entire image. You can see here in the UV editor that uh, there are overlapping UVs and it's, like I said, it's just a, a beginning point. It's not the end point and we'll have to make some corrections and cut and sew UVs to get things oriented the way that we want. I pretty much know that I want to separate the head and possibly this little object that the demon baby is holding up to its cheek. So I'll select just the UVs that I want to have be on one shell and I'll separate those uh, from the rest of the UV shell. Right now this is all one big UV shell. You can see I'm also accidentally grabbing a couple of UVs on the shoulder there so I'll, I'll end up needing to put those back where they belong. So you'd use that with move and sew. Select the edges, say move and sew and it'll sew them back into where they they belong onto the overall shell. So here you can see I almost got it all done. I had to do one last little clip or cut at the edge and then unfold it into this kind of uh, nice UV layout where I have a single seam that goes up the back side of the head. That's probably the least noticeable place. And then it flays it out into that kind of a flattened uh, projection for the head. Uh, I've got some more uh, areas here where I need to clean up the layout. Uh, on the body, I need to. I had some problems where I had some uh, 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 some vertices that were duplicates that weren't uh, that needed to be merged together in order to allow the seams to be uh, sewed uh, back together. Uh, you can see here, yeah, that's where I'm melding the or merging uh, vertices that are. Uh, not properly welded and so once I once I do that I can put this all back together and put them back back where they belong so you'll have to do some cleanup 
here and there. It never is perfect uh, to begin with. So there is our finished UV low poly uh, object. The next step is to clean up the history on it and save your scene. Okay, now that I have a low poly model that has UVs on it, um, the next step is to create a smoothed version of this model that has a bit more density. Um, I wanted to do that after I created a, an initial set of UVs so that it was easier to create the, create the UVs on the low poly version. But really, we'd probably like a little more detail than what is it, 7,500 uh, faces or I can't remember, triangles, whatever. It's pretty a little bit too low poly at this point. So I'm going to go up to the mesh smooth menu and I'll do uh, one division level, just doubling uh, what's there. You can see it's quite a bit smoother. Uh, now we have ourselves 15,000 faces, which isn't too awful bad. It's a little too smooth. Uh, the next step now is to go ahead and bring our um, our high resolution mesh and uh, and do a little smoothing on uh, relaxing on top of the meshed model the the high resolution or let's call it a low resolution it's not really low poly but it's a kind of medium poly and I'm just going to go back over the surface so that uh, it brings it back up in alignment with the high resolution model um, uh, after having created that smooth mesh because uh, that way it kind of sticks to the surface and it more closely approximates the actual surface of the of the model until I'm happy with it. That looks pretty good right there. It's picking up uh, as much of the detail as it probably can create. Okay, so what I didn't show in the last clip was that we exported that uh, retopoed model out of Maya and I put it into the directory I'm working with with uh, Metashape. And so now I want to load that retopoed model into my existing Metashape project. I don't want to replace the existing 3D model because um, I want to use that information to reproject the image textures onto the surface of my uh, retopoed model. So I've brought it in. It, it lines right up because I didn't move it in Maya or anything. And now I want to go down to the next uh, workflow um, item there called project or create texture. And so uh, I'll keep the UVs. The UVs will follow the OBJ file as they were exported from Maya. So I'll keep those UVs and then I'll project from those cameras onto the different or the UV set that I created in Maya and voila there we are we have our uh, texture information applied to the UV uh, coordinate system that was created in Maya on top of our uh, nice uh, 30,000 face model that we created in Maya so much better than a million million faces or, or almost a million faces and now we're down to 30,000 and it looks just about as good as it did uh, in the high resolution uh, version. Next thing we'll want to do now is export that model back out of Metashape. And that way we'll have ourselves a complete model that has the uh, uh, the texture information applied to it. And I just called that Demon Baby Final. Uh, again, I'm just going to export this out as a with JPEG textures. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything more than that. And we'll save and quit Metashape.
All right, so we've exported our model from Metashape, and now we're going to take a look at it in Maya, and we'll see our final product. I'm going to always, when I open up Maya, I set project first so that it knows what project we're working on, and um, I can either create a new scene or import it into my existing scene, depending on what I plan on doing with it. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to import the model into an empty scene so we don't have to concern ourselves with any of the other stuff. You'll see it how it shows up in a clean scene. So I, I've copied those uh, uh, the final output from Metashape into my Assets folder in my Maya project directory. And you can see here it comes in as Demon Baby Final Mesh. I can select the mesh and hit the F key, which centers it in my view. And then I'll turn on hardware texturing so we can see the texture information applied to the surface. And um, looks good. Nice, clean, uh, appropriately topoed, and 30,000 uh, faces on this model. So it's nice and you know, could even be smaller if you, depending on what you're going to do with it, but it's probably a good medium size. We'll look, open up the UV editor and take a look at how the uh, textures are laid out. You can see now they're um, all nice and, you know, they make sense. You can kind of tell what's what's what, as opposed to the kind of mishmash of texture information that was in the initial uh, thing. So you could actually touch that up in Photoshop and do stuff with it and know where you were working. And we'll take a look in the attribute editor and you can see there's where the new uh, JPEG is applied to. You might want to change materials and now you can begin to develop the actual look of it uh, by changing the material. I guess it's applied probably by default to a, a, a regular Lambert shader. And then I'll just save it out and we're done. Hope that helps.